Hi, I'm Annie of ByAnnie.com and Patterns by Annie. Thank you so much for joining us for week number two of season two of Live with Annie. It's always fun to see our regular viewers joining us from all over the world, so thank you for being with us again. If you're new to Live with Annie, we welcome you to our community and hope to see you again. We know that there are lots of things that all of you can be doing with this time, and we really appreciate that you made the time to be with us. Last week, we shared lots of tips for making it happen in 2022. Whether your goal is to finish some UFOs, clean and organize your sewing room, or finally tackle those Biani projects, we had lots of tips to help you succeed. To thank everyone for joining us, we gave away two prizes, each consisting of a half-yard package of soft and stable and a pattern. The lucky winner of the catch-all caddy and soft and stable was Elizabeth Forrestal. And Karen Trisnoski, Trinoski, hopefully I said that right, was the winner of the in-control pattern and soft and stable. Trevor was really busy this week getting things ready to launch our local quilt shop contest, so he just now notified people. So if you're watching, be sure and reach out to him and let him know your address. Otherwise, watch your Facebook messages for a message from him so that you can confirm your address and we can get those off to you. So one of the tips we shared last week for making things happen was to get organized. And since January is National Get Organized Month, we're going to spend the rest of this month's episodes talking about ways to organize your workspace or home. If you're watching this, I'm assuming you like to sew. So our focus will be on ways to organize a sewing space. However, many of the suggestions will work for organizing a home office or other parts of the home as well. This week, we're going to take a quick tour of my home sewing studio to show you some of the ways that I organize fabrics, tools and supplies, and projects. We're going to focus on non-sew items that help make your space more efficient and welcoming. Next week, we'll showcase a variety of Biani projects to make for storing and organizing rulers, tools, notions, and supplies. And the following week, we'll share even more ideas for organizing fabrics and projects. I am very fortunate to have a nice big sewing room with lots of storage space. Having been a maker for many years, I can tell you that I have tried all kinds of organizational products and have come up with some that work really well for me. Jake and I met at my house yesterday to film a quick tour, so we're going to play that for you now. Hi, welcome to my studio. I've been busy cleaning and organizing, so I thought before I mess it up again, I'd give you a quick tour. Maybe it'll help give you some ideas for ways that you can organize your home sewing space too. So the centerpiece of my sewing room is this great big work table that my husband made for me. It's just a simple table made out of pine, I believe. Uh, with a big 4x8 sheet of plywood on top that he puts some laminate on. And what I love about this table is I can put two big 24 by 36 inch cutting mats on it, and then I can lay a whole big piece of quilted fabric or regular fabric out and cut it out at once. So I've got lots of space to work, so long as I keep it clean as I go. The problem always happens when I'm in the midst of things and I'm making big piles like this and all of a sudden I have no space to work. But if I keep them clean, I've got work to go. I always keep on that end of the table my catch-all caddy with all my tools and supplies in it, my um, contain yourself and petty four basket with wonder clips, and my wool pin cushions that I made using our pattern um, from the needle case and wool pin cushion. I, um, that way I always know where my tools and supplies are as I'm working because that's way down at the end of the table and I don't want it to do, I a lot of times take this little contain yourself and move it closer to where I'm working and throw my chalk markers and circle rulers and bodkins and things like that in there so that I can keep them closer to where I'm working. But this is kind of the, the main workspace in my sewing room. You may notice that I've got a long yardstick 
two yard yardstick on here. This is a relic from the days when we cut soft and stable at home. And we had a contraption that we would clamp, clamp onto that side of the table and we would mount the big 50 yard roll of soft and stable on it. And then we could pull it out and measure how long and lift this up and run it underneath here. And then there's a groove along here that we could run a um, utility knife along here to cut it. And then we take the pieces as we cut them, put them on a table and then fold them all at once. So when we didn't do soft and stable at my house anymore, I thought I'm still going to keep this here because it really comes in handy when I'm making handles and straps and I need to measure out a long piece of strapping. So it's, it's there. Sometimes it gets in the way, but I really appreciate having it. The other thing that I really love about this table is that I can put um, little L hooks in screw them in here on the end. And these are something you can get at the hardware store. Hardware store, I think they're called steel cup hooks and they're a square bend, I think is what they're called. But the nice thing about them is it makes it really easy to hook your rulers on. They're, they're shaped right and you can use a pliers to pull them out and make them a little bit more angled if, if you need. But you can see I've spaced them so that my rulers are really easy to access. I have all my square rulers here, my big square rulers, then my creative grids, eight and a half and four and a half inch rulers, my triangle rulers that I use when I join, um, binding ends, smaller rulers, and then the two that I use the most often, which are my six by 24 inch. So when I'm ready to work, I've got them easy to use and then I can just hang them right back up. And that is one of my very favorite features of, of this sewing table. I also put little hooks on the end where I keep my samples of mesh and fold over. So when I'm auditioning colors for a project, I can lay them right out on my piece of fabric and decide which color I want to use for that project. So those are hanging on the end as well for really easy access. The other thing that I love about this table is that there's room underneath for these big wheeled bins. So if you look at how it's built, there is a, a cross member that goes across that makes it really nice and sturdy and then legs on each side. But I've got room on each side for six wheeled bins that I can use for fabric. And I, I'm gonna talk more about fabric um, probably next week, maybe the following week, and how I fold and how I organize. But the important thing to know now is that these are um, wheeled bins, the drawers slide out, I can pull them out completely. So if I need oranges for a project, I've got that ready to go. And they just make it really easy to access your fabric and put it away. I also have, because my ruler that I use more often than, than most is my 20 and a half inch square and I don't have room out there to put it without it being in the way, I put a screw on the inside in here or one of those little hooks. And when I need to put this away, I just feel in there for the hook and I can, I can hook my ruler right on it. So that keeps it up off the floor so it's safe, keeps it out of the way, but still really easy to get to. And I've got bins on this side and, as, and on the other side as well. We'll talk more about those later. And then I also added some hooks on this end where I put other rulers so when I've got friends here, sewing, they can cut on this end, I can cut on that end, and, and we all have room to cut. Here's another table that right now is empty. Usually this is covered with projects that are in process or cutting mats, and there's bins underneath full of projects. But as I said, I've been cleaning, so you get the, you get the nice view. This is something, though, that I wanted to show you. If you've got a folding table like this, but it's too low to be comfortable for cutting. Um, we've just made some PVC risers for it. So that's just PVC pipe cut to the length that we wanted. And then it has little end caps on that. So that's something you can find at your local home improvement store and they probably even cut it for you. If you don't have a table that has legs like this that will support those, you can also go like to Bed Bath & Beyond or a store like that, Walmart even, and get bed risers. And we've got some of those. I'll try and remember to, 
dig those out when we are back at the warehouse and show you how those work. All right, so this end of the room is storage for books, patterns that I'm working on, projects that are in process, projects that I still need to do. I love my nesting baskets for holding um, fat quarters, tools and supplies. They've got places for little labels. These are actually empty right now, but um, waiting for me to put something in them. Um, this is um, pieces ready to go for a pleated log cabin. The pack it in makes a really great way to organize everything in one space for a particular project. Little bins like this also work well. These are projects that I've had sitting here for way too long, and one of these days I need to finish these. Um, this is something that's really fun. If you have a very big collection of zipper poles, I found these at um, Harbor Freight. They're made, obviously, to go in a garage, but they have little drawers that are perfect for all the different colors of zipper poles. And then once I get past the zipper poles, I've got one for magnets, and then all my hardware in the various sizes and styles. And extra little things like washi tape, bigger drawers at the bottom for other sizes of hardware. And those are just really handy because it's really easy to access. Uh, not too much else of interest there. If you're a, a quilter who uses stencils, I when I used to do machine a lot of machine quilting, I collected a lot of stencils, and this was a handy way to store and display those. So this was just a garment rack that I bought, um, and then made it lower. I think it was made to you know be for a closet. It's not terribly sturdy, but it works fine. And then I got these are. Um, shower curtain hooks that go over and then I can organize my stencils by type like these are curves small put them all on there hang them on there and then when you need a stencil they're easy to take off the ring and easy to access so those are quilting stencils these are all projects in process I have friends who come to sew so I've got empty bins where they can put their projects when they're um, when they leave and vinyl storage. I've got some thread racks here that I got when I used to work with Superior Threads. So this is my collection of embroidery threads and decorative threads, which one of these days I'll hang on the wall. I used to have it, have those two stacked on each other, but this works well. This is another great idea for storing thread. This is a little container made for matchbox cars. Uh, you can find these at in the toy department usually or online. I know Superior Threads sells these on their website too, but these are great for holding lots of spools of threads and they're two-sided. So you can open that side and access everything and then flip it over and access what's in the other side. So that's a handy way to store and transport thread with you. When this used to be my office, we had lots of filing cabinets, and when we moved the office to the new warehouse, I kept a few of the filing cabinets because they're great for storage too. So I turned this so that I've got this metal side open, and a lot of times when I'm making lists of what I wanna do, this is a perfect place to post them. I've got my interfacing up here, and I just keep it in a plastic bin labeled by what it is. I've got a bolt of slicker and other interfacing and then my stiff stuff and my texture magic. So everything's easy to access right there. Then I have two bat um, drawers here that I use for my mesh that I keep at home. I try to keep at least a two yard piece plus any little scraps. And I just put those in big 12 by 16 inch bags and organize those alphabetically. So it takes two drawers to do all 14 colors, but you can see they're not terribly neat, but they're easy to access and use. And then in the other drawers, I keep bags for things, templates, all kinds of stuff like that. Here's another really favorite part of my room. This is a baker's rack that I bought from an online restaurant, restaurant supply store. It's called a sheet pan rack, I believe. And they make great big ones. This is just a half rack, so I think it holds 10 trays. 
you buy the trays separately, but it is a really nice way to keep parts for a project. So I've got my step outs here that I'm getting ready to do for add-on videos. So I've got all the parts and pieces for Get Out of Town on this rack, Travel Essentials on this rack, um, Travel Duffel, and then other projects that are in, in process. The thing that I've learned is that, for me anyway, if a project is out of sight, it's pretty much out of mind. And so if I have it out where I can see it and be reminded of it, I'm much more likely to get it finished. Things that go in my closets, I don't put things in there that I want to work on right away because I forget them. The other thing that I learned is that when I moved in here, maybe 10 years ago, I'd come from a 10 by 10 foot sewing room and I came to this big room and I thought, I will never, ever, ever use all that space. And as you can see, every bit of space is used and then some. And so stuff expands to fill the amount of space that you have. And um, that's just something to keep in mind. All right, here's my sewing station. I've got a wonderful koala cabinet that I love. It enables me to put whatever machine I want in here. If I want to use the Bernina 790, which has a little bit different footprint, I can raise and lower this part of the table so it's just the right height. And then I have a different insert for that table. There's room to use the embroidery unit. And then there's nice storage drawers next to it. And those are where I keep um, overflow notions, needles, um, Got a little clam up with all my extra rotary blades in it, my little needle case with my thimble and hand needles, my pipe cleaners for cleaning my machine. And then down here is the embroidery module with all my stabilizers and extra parts and pieces for the thing, for the machine. I love having a little in control next to my machine. And we have these basically by every machine at the warehouse too. So everything that I need while I'm sewing, my snippers, my stiletto, scissors, seam ripper, things to clean my machine, those are all handy right there. I keep my bobbins in a little bobbin saver right next to the machine so it's easy to change uh, colors of bobbins. My feet are in the cases that come with the machine. And then I keep a little... Um, clam up here with my wonder clips in it. These are wonderful because I can take them off and put them right in there. And when this one's full, I move it over to the table and you know, bring a, bring a basket over. So I'm going back and forth with those all the time. I like using my project bags for keeping the project that I'm working on all organized and together. So these are my log cabin blocks that I uh, showed you in last week's um, segment. I had nine blocks done, I think, last week. I've got all 16. I'm going on the, let's see, I've done one, two. I'm on the second round on all of these. So I decided to do all of them at once. That way I only have to make one trip to the, to the ironing board and, and trimming table. So those are going pretty well. I'm lucky to have um, space for another machine set up. So this is my older sewing table that I had before I got the big koala one. And I keep um, my a second Bernina set up here. This is really nice when someone comes to sew. My sister's been here visiting, so this is her machine while she's here. But it's also really nice when I'm working on a project that I may need more than one color of thread for. So I can thread one machine with one color, thread the other machine with the other color, and that way I'm not having to re-thread, I just switch machines. So not everybody's gonna have that luxury, but if you do have more than one machine and have the ability to set them up, keep that in mind. You can see we've got another catch-all caddy by this machine. I try to keep the machines that I'm not using covered with an undercover. I love these because I can keep the manual and all the parts and pieces for that machine together with it, but it also helps keep it a little bit cleaner and makes the room look nice. So we try to always make a catch-all caddy that matches the uh, machine cover and then a clam up too. So we have a nice matching set. This is a really um, awesome way to organize thread. 
and my husband had made this pegboard for me. He just took it and put it in a frame and then screwed it to the wall so it's nice and sturdy and it's infinitely arrangeable. So you can take your pegboard hooks and put them wherever you want them. I didn't have table space for these June Taylor thread racks, so I just put some hooks. Jake, can you get right in here? I put some hooks in the wall and I just have the thread rack sitting on those hooks. So that's two thread racks and I have my threads in in our numerical order starting at the top so they end about right here and then overflow and other threads go at the bottom so it's always really easy to find the color that i'm looking for and you'll notice i have a little step stool right here because i'm not sure to, i'm too short to get up there so when i need the ones on top my stool is really handy to get up there when my grandson comes and sews we put the foot pedal on the step stool and then he can sit there and sew so, or he sits at his other little table. This is my um, color card for my zippers. So when I'm ready to audition colors for a project, I have all 48 colors on here. I just took the zippers out of the package and stapled them to the tag so I can look and see the number if I don't remember which one it is. And when I'm auditioning zippers for a project, I just lay these out on my fabric and I can decide which one I want to use. All right, I've got a couple closets for storage space. I'm not showing you the inside of those, but that's where I keep my soft and stable. I like to keep it out of the sunlight so it doesn't turn yellow, and I just keep it rolled up and in like contain yourself bins to organize it. This is some artwork that my grandson and I did. He, um, we drew Medusa, so he decorates my room. These are another really great way to organize all kinds of things. These are 10 drawer units. I believe I got them at Michael's. I've got three of them. They perfectly fit in between my two closets and I love that they're on wheels. So if I wanna use them over somewhere else or just move them to clean, that makes it really easy. So this is the one where I store all my zippers. I've got a color card in the top so I know what colors they are, but I pretty much put them in order by the color card. So I've got, you know, just lots and lots of zippers stored in there. And whenever I need zippers, I know right where to go. So that's my zipper unit. Then this one is just all kinds of miscellaneous stuff. So extra tools and notions, extra bobbins, uh, overthrow thread on those, glue sticks, fold over elastic that's not in rolls, strapping. So I keep one for one inch. Black and white, one for one and a half inch. And then hook and loop tape down at the bottom. I've got a couple bins of that. This one is one where I keep, again, mostly threads. Some of my heat press batting tape and those. And then I've got one for my cones of so fine, two actually for cones of so fine, and then into other threads like bottom line highlights threads for my serger so that's that's mostly filled with threads on the top i've got my rolls of fold over elastic a little basket of rubber bands and then these are the comic strip or comic book boards that we use for folding fabric and we'll talk about that more when we talk about folding fabric and i keep the little clips that we use for them in some little a pencil case for lola cases so those are easy to move wherever i'm folding this is my desk area where I work on writing patterns or answering emails. And um, again, I've got filing cabinets over here. This is how I store my patterns at home. So I bought, I have hanging folders in here, but then I bought some alphabetical dividers and I just keep the patterns in, um, let's find one that's more recent. It may have a cover with it. So I keep them in sheet protectors with the pattern, the cover at the back, and just really easy to access. So those are all by any patterns that I have here at home that I want to sew with. And then down in the bottom are other patterns that I've collected over the years that one day I'm going to make. We'll see how quickly I get to that. But lots of old stuff in there that that I just can't seem to part with. 
got printers, scanners, um, another nice workspace here that's usually covered just like this with boxes and stuff. These are um, prototypes or um, drafts of patterns we've been working on, things that I want to do in the coming months, and then a whole bin full of ideas that have come in for new patterns. As I've often said, I could I could work the rest of my life and never finish all the patterns that we've got ideas for. But this is, this box tends to live here at home because it's at home that I usually get time to think about things like that. Um, and so they stay here. This is Liam's workspace. So we've got a little table for him that I can slide out when he comes to work. He's got his little filing cabinet there. It's out of the way when, when I'm here by myself, but when he comes, he's got a place where he can be right in the midst of everything with me. So we can set his sewing machine up on there and, and he can sew too. The last thing is on this side of the room, um, my serger, again, I've got a catch-all caddy next to that, which I like having next to my iron with my pressing bars, my turning tools, my ham, all the things that you might need next to the ironing board. My new, nice new uh, ironing board cover that my son made for me that's big enough I can iron a full width of fabric and my serger, and that's it. Thank you so much for joining me on this quick tour of my home sewing studio. I hope you found some good ideas that will help you organize your room too. Okay, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that little tour and that you got some good ideas. One thing to tell you is be creative as you look for organizational solutions. As you saw, I found help in lots of places from toy and hardware stores to office and restaurant supply companies. So look all over. If you have any questions about anything you saw, be sure to post them in the comments and we'll do our best to answer them. As you no doubt noticed, I could sew for another lifetime or two and never finish all the projects that I've accumulated, much less ideas that I have for new ones that I don't even have projects for yet, or products for. But having things neat and organized really makes it a joy for me to go work up there and makes it me much more efficient when I do. So it looks like Trevor um, posted a few questions. Do you know the size of your sewing space in square feet? Hmm, Jake, do you have an idea what size that room is? Probably 12 feet wide and 20 or 30 feet long, probably? Yeah, maybe a little bit wider. Maybe a little bit wider. So whatever that works out to. It is really a good size sewing space. And I, I truthfully never thought I would ever fill it. Maybe when we do the thing on fabric, I'll bring a picture of what I had before. And when I moved in there, I, you know, it's like, oh, I'll never ever do this. And here I am spread out through the whole house now. Do you know the brand or where you got the wheeled fabric bins? I bought those at Lowe's, but that's been 10 years ago and I looked for them recently and they didn't have them still. But if you go to Ikea, they have something similar. Uh, the Container Store has something similar. What I liked about those is that they had three of the bins that I showed you that are about that deep. And then there was a little short one too. And I usually use the little short one for fat quarter, you know, collections or projects in process. But it's so nice having those wheels that you can move them out and they hold a lot of fabric. So yeah, do a little searching online, but check your um, local home improvement store. You might be able to find one there. How tall is your cutting table? I know that they say that you should have your cutting table so that when you bend your elbow, it's like that, so that you're ergonomically doing it right. That's how tall our tables upstairs are. And I prefer one that's a little bit shorter. So I don't know what this is, but I would say, you know, go by the height of where your arm bends and maybe a little bit below that if you can. Uh, but that, you know, do some searching online and, and see what the, what they recommend. So I don't know really what the height is. If you, if you are going to get some wheeled bins like that, you definitely want to measure them and make sure that your table, if you build a table, is high enough for those to go under it. Where did you find the pegboard and what size is it? 
I'm sure that Al bought that at Lowe's or Home Depot, one of those, and probably cut it to size and then built the frame about around it. And I know he painted it. It wasn't white. Oh, take that back. It was white. It's more of a plastic pegboard. It's not the uh, fiber board that often you find. But yeah, just go to a local home improvement store. And that one, I would say, is probably about 18 to 20 inches wide and maybe two to three feet tall. So the nice thing about that stuff is you can cut it easily and make it a size that fits for the space that you have. The standalone white thread organizer, the one that had all the racks on it I assume you're talking about, that is a product from Superior Threads and when I used to do shows and things with them if they ever had one that came in with bent shelves or something they gave me a couple of them, so that's how I got them. I know that stores can get those, um, but you have to, you know, buy them full of thread. But if that's something you're looking for, you might want to check with Superior Threads to see if they've got something like that. The little one that had the lids that opened, that again came from the toy department, I believe at Walmart when I bought it, but I know you can find those online as well. So good, thank you for those questions. Um, we're going to go on now to a few announcements. Uh, Road to California is coming up soon. This is normally the time when we would be packing and getting ready for that show. Um, that show is still on track to be held in person at the Ontario Convention Center in Ontario, California, starting January 19th and running through the 22nd. Unfortunately, we had to make the really hard decision last spring to skip the show this year, but we are really happy to announce that Biani will be represented there. Our friend Cindy Serena of Customs Creation has a mini trunk show of some Biani models, and she's got patterns, mesh, fold-over elastic, zippers, soft and stable, stilettos, and more. So you can find her booth. Her company, again, is Custom Creations. She's in booth 902, which is in the main hall. I believe it's called the Exhibit Hall at Road to California. And Cindy told me she's also going to be at the Rusty Barn Show in Phoenix the following week after that. So if you're going to be at either of those shows and want to see some Biani products up close and personal, make sure you go Cindy. So go see Cindy and her team and be sure to shop early and tell them that I sent you. Let's move on now to our featured local quilt shop of the week. It is almost time for our fifth annual local quilt shop contest. This is one of our favorite events of the year and we are really anxious to get it started. We launch the contest each year on local quilt shop day, which is always the fourth Saturday in January. This year that's on January 22nd. So we're going to be announcing the contest on our Facebook Live next Wednesday. Voting starts on January 22nd and will run all the way to the end of February. If you're a store, be sure to check your inbox for an email from us that sends you information about how to verify your store information. You want to be sure to do that because it will ensure that your customers can find you and vote for the right store, and also all the stores who verify will get a media kit from us. During the contest, we encourage sewists to vote for their local favorite local quilt shop and share a little bit about what makes them special. And to continue the fun and support of those local businesses, each week we highlight a store and some of their voter submissions during Live with Annie. So today we are traveling to sunny California to feature Cali Quilt Co. in Rancho Cordova. J owned by Joe and Tava Singer, Cali Quilt Co. is a modern quilt shop specializing in children's prints, minky and cuddle, Kona cotton, and other modern fabrics. Their 20,000 square feet of space is so bright and beautiful, and I have never seen so much cuddle and minky in one place. The store is open seven days a week for in-person shopping, and Tava explained that because their beautiful store was built during the pandemic, it was designed with wide aisles so that shoppers can always be six feet apart. Those wide aisles also make everything very accessible for wheelchairs. Be sure to check out Cali Quilt Co.'s website for their class schedule. They have a full roster of in-store and virtual classes, and Tava explained to me that any class offered in-store may also be taken virtually. 
Joe and Tava also present, present live shows every Wednesday and Sunday on Facebook Live, and they are very active on social media. Right now, they are doing a virtual shop hop with three other stores, including Off the Rails in Iowa, who we recently feature, featured as our local quilt shop of the week. The shop hop started on Monday with each store presenting a live show beginning at 6 p.m. or 4 p.m. Pacific. Cali Quilt Co.'s live presentation will be tomorrow night, which is Thursday. The catchy theme for their shop hop is stripping for the season, and each store will send a free gift with any purchase over $15. The gift includes three two and a half inch jelly roll strips, plus an awesome pattern to make an 18 inch pillow using six of those strips. The stores have coordinated to pick the color blue for the winter season so you can mix strips together from the various stores. And each store also has a completion kit available. The stores are going to continue this theme throughout the year so they'll have virtual hops again in spring, summer, and fall and they'll continue to use jelly roll strips each time, but each season's going to feature a different pattern. I thought that was really a fun idea. Customers who voted in last year's contest raved about Cali Quilt Co.'s amazing customer service and great selection. Judy said, Joe and Tava, Tava the owners, work really hard to make everyone feel at home. Thus, their customer service rocks. Every employee I've met so far also follows their helpful and welcoming attitude. And Shelley shared, I always feel like I am the most important person they are dealing with. Shipping is always fast and everything comes in perfect order. Angela agreed and added, they have so much space to browse, long arms to rent, fun kits for large and small projects. They have weekly technique and project videos and every single employee I have encountered is helpful and friendly. With over 600 comments like that, it's easy to see why Cali Quilt Co. was voted the fourth place winner in our 2021 local quilt shop contest. Joe and Tava told me how much they enjoyed the contest and they can't wait to get going again this year. They're shooting for the grand prize this year. So be sure to join us next week for all the details about this year's contest and prizes, and then get ready to vote starting January 22nd. To thank everyone for joining us this week, we have a really fun giveaway. And one lucky winner is going to get the packet in pattern plus the supplies to make three cases. So the pattern includes three sizes, a small, a medium, and a large. So the supplies that you'll need are a package of mesh, a package of soft and stable, a one yard package of strapping, and a zippers by the yard. You'll have plenty of zippers by the yard um, left over for another project too. Well, not maybe not plenty, but some. So that's everything you need except fabric and thread to make all three cases. Remember that soft and stable and strapping both come in black or in white. Um, mesh comes in 14 fun colors. Zippers by the yard comes in 32 fabulous colors. So if you have a preference, be sure to let Trevor know when he reaches out to let you know that you've won. And here's what you need to do to win. And remember, you need to do this on Facebook. We haven't figured out how to make it work on YouTube. So the first thing to do is leave us a comment. Tell us whether you've been cleaning and organizing in the new year. Did you learn any new ideas today for organizing during my studio tour? Have you raided the home improvement store or hardware store for items to organize your sewing space? And what other tips can you share for cleaning and organizing? Finally, we always enjoy learning about your ideas for new patterns or other tips as well. The second thing that we ask you to do is tag a friend. We want to spread the word, so please share this with someone who you think would enjoy our weekly Facebook Live presentations. And to tag someone, all you need to do is type the at symbol followed by the name that they use on Facebook. Their picture and name will pop up so you can make sure you have the right person. If you do, click on that, add your comment, and then click Submit. We are going to pick winners from comments made by Midnight Mountain Time tonight, so you have about nine and a half more hours to watch and comment. 
Finally, remember to check your Facebook messages. Trevor is going to notify our winner and ask you to email your shipping address. And again, you can let him know then what color of soft and stable mesh zippers and strapping you would like. So thank you again to everyone who joined us today. We will be back next week at 2 p.m. Mountain Time with another fun episode of Live with Annie. In na honor of National Get Organized Month, we're going to continue our series of ways to organize your sewing space. We'll have a mini Biani trunk show focusing on a dozen great Biani patterns you can make to store and organize your sewing tools and notions. The added benefit, they are a great way to use up some of your fabric zipper and mesh stash. So we've got lots of great tips to share, so be sure to join us then. And until then, happy stitching! <laughs>